All right. So here were the files here. And once we open it up again, we have added eyeballs on this guy. If you tap six on your keyboard, you should see textures. If you don't see textures, you'll need to reload them. You can do that by going to Windows, General Editors, um, File Path Editor, and use that tool to reload your textures. <coughs> so we added the weighting on the shell, added a new joint, and then also added the eyeballs. You can select those joints and tap E to rotate to test them out. Uh, one trick about Maya, when you're opening your files, if you have the all the files in the same folder, like the texture, oh, whoops, all the files in the same folder, like the texture, when you open your uh, scene, Maya will automatically look in that directory that you're opening something from to find anything that's missing. I don't know if that makes sense. Sometimes I just say stuff and I hope that it makes sense to you guys. I try and speak in the most, uh, the best English I possibly can. All right, let's go ahead and um, add some controls. I can't think of anything else we want to do to this guy. Um, actually, I can think of something else we can do to this guy. What's that? No, doesn't look like it. <coughs> yeah, let's go ahead and just drop some controls in here. Okay. Um, in the uh, upper left-hand corner, you want to switch your drop-down to. Um, why isn't that showing? In the upper left hand corner, you want to switch your drop down to rigging. And uh, so, this turtle, what we did, we, we pulled this model from online. And when we got it, I think it already had some controls. We pulled it into 3D Studio Max, it had some controls, it had the weighting on it. And we pulled it from 3D Studio Max, we pulled it in here. And we, we had the weighting, but we just added more stuff to it. We added the eyes and the shell. We added more bones to it. So I think with this exercise, what we're going to do is just continue down that path of, like, basically, it's I'm teaching you guys how to, like, be flexible. So, like, nothing ever, like, when you're rigging something, nothing ever, like, happens in, like, the perfect order. Like, where you get a model and it's perfect and you rig it yourself and it comes out perfect and then you add controls and it comes out perfect like that that you know perfect pipeline like never happens sometimes you're given a model from another studio that's broken and you have to like add stuff and you have to like fix stuff like it's just never a perfect scenario which is why um, and we'll we'll do some more of that going forward here anyway okay uh, click on the curves tab in the upper left and uh, there's going to be a NURBS circle. Let's go ahead and click that. Create one of those. And uh, what I want you guys to do is hide the, um, the, the polygons here by going to show um, Polygons, go to show polygons and turn the polygons off. And then um, let's go ahead and scale up this circle. Uh, so select the circle, tap R and scale it up. Scale it from the center. 
using the um, the yellow box. And then what I want you to do is move this and snap it to the turtle shell. And the way you do that is tap W to move and then hold V on your keyboard. And when you hold V on your keyboard while you move something, if you move it from the yellow center, it will snap to joints. This is called V snapping, okay? And I know we've done this before but this is a very easy way to add controls very quickly to something and have them snap perfectly to wherever you want them to snap to. So let's go ahead and add that to the turtle. And then you can go back to show polygons again and um, size that circle to the to the, you know, so you can see it on the shell, over the shell. So whenever I'm adding controls like this, I know what this turtle looks like. So I'm just going to I'm just going to turn off all my polygons here and then I'm going to duplicate this control again. And this time I'm going to V snap it to the base of the turtle. And this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger to cover his uh, leg span here. Duplicate is edit duplicate. Or you can do control D. So we'll have two circles here. <clears throat> One will be for the base of the turtle. Let's try something crazy. Yes, I'm just gonna try something. cool that worked okay so actually let's do something a little crazier okay let's get crazy today uh, go ahead and delete that big circle so sometimes like when you're rigging a character <clears throat> you want to like like that the, when we had two circles there it can kind of get a little confusing you're like oh well, I have two circles um, sometimes you want to use a different shape control Okay, let's use a different shape control this time. Um, click the square one. When you click the, the square one, uh, it's going to appear at the center of the grid. You can just drag, select that, and type F, and you'll zoom right to it. And you'll notice that the thing about this square control is that you can select each individual side of the control. And you can kind of move those out of the way and then tap Control Z and they'll come back. <coughs> this square gets made with separate sides. Okay? I don't know why it does that. I, I assume it does that so that if you wanted to just have a, these are called curves. If you wanted to just have a curve that was a straight piece, you could um, you could just create this and and use a straight piece. But what we're going to do is we're going to attach all sides of this curve together. <coughs> and there's some some little tricky things that you have to do with that to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so in your upper left hand drop down, change it to modeling. 
and when you change it to modeling <clears throat> you're going to have an option that comes up called curves and you want to go down to the option box for something called attach in curves and you're going to have some options here it's going to default to all these options here um, and there's some cool stuff that can come out of these options I'll just show you here if you guys just look up here real quick so this is a, squ a square with um, sharp corners there's an option here for blend and if I select two parts here and hit apply on blend what happens they blend together see that but if I turn off blend they stay um, sharp okay so what we're gonna do and there's also this option here which says keep originals uh, we want to uncheck that so you want um, <coughs> connect to be on and keep originals turned off then you want to select all parts of the square and then just hit apply and that will connect the entire square now the tricky part about that is when you go to try and move the square some really funky stuff happens and I don't know why this does that I used to think it was a bug in Maya but they never fixed it so there's an easy way to get around that you just duplicate it edit duplicate then when you move the square it's now a hard square and it has no issues okay I'm gonna go over those steps again because I think some of your eyes have glazed over um, so we have this attach curves box up you're gonna change the options to connect and turn off keep originals then you're gonna select all the edges in the square and then click apply now keep it selected and when you move it <laughs> well now it works it's hilarious so mine works but if yours doesn't work just go ahead and go edit duplicate and duplicate it and uh, then you should have a square that's like perfectly square yeah, it's I don't, yeah I have no words for that bug and then what we'll do is scale up the square and put it to where the big circle was V snap it to the center of the turtle that way we have two different controls we have a square and a circle <clears throat> and the square will be for the the main part of the turtle and the circle will be for the uh, the shell okay so we know the difference so yeah sometimes you're gonna want like different um, different control uh, shapes okay uh, so let's go ahead and give him a head control now so what I want you to do is duplicate and I'm gonna leave it up to you to use your show controls to turn on and off the polygons I'll, let's duplicate the circle control and move it to the neck V snap that to the neck and then you want to rotate and scale that to fit like a collar and you can pop in and out your um, polygons to uh, <clears throat> uh, you know what you can do <clears throat> So watch this, Danny. If I click show, there's a little bar that runs along the top. You can click that and it will pop the menu out.
and you can just keep it popped out like this and you can, then you can just go over here and just turn things on and off as you work. That's one way to do it. <coughs> yeah, give them a net control. And then we're going to need uh, to duplicate those circle controls and uh, how are we going to do this? Yeah, all right, duplicate the circle controls and the four main Hang on a minute here. Let me think think this through. Yeah, okay. If you duplicate a circle control, see what I did here? And you want to make it more of a, um, what's that called? An ellipse, maybe? Anybody know what that shape's called? Oval. Oval. You can scale that circle in X and Y to 15. Wait, sorry. Z, yeah. 15, 15. And uh, in Z, scale it to 5. And that should fit around the flippers. So X and Y will be 15, and Z will be 5. So I'm a genius, and I just deleted my shell. Make sure to duplicate it. And uh, what you can do is go into your top view by tapping your space bar. And then you can position the uh, oval around the flipper <laughs> like this. You tap your space bar, it'll go into top view. And then um, you also want to make sure that that's in, in your other axes that it matches the, you know, it's around the flipper. <clears throat> and then in your top view, you can duplicate it, move it, and rotate it. Uh, to the back flipper. And if you change the scale X to 10, it should fit around the other flipper. So if you change the scale X to 10 when you duplicate it, it should fit around the other flipper like this.
Okay, so uh, when you've got those flippers created, you want to go ahead and duplicate those over to the other side. Um, so for now, just go ahead and in your top view, just duplicate them and move them over. And just match them up the best you can. They don't have to be perfectly matched. And uh, with the back flipper, it's rotated the opposite way. All you have to do is just go over and rotate. And whatever number that you have in there, just put a negative by it and then hit enter. And it will flip to the exact negative <coughs> uh, rotate of the other one. As you guys can probably see, I've duplicated the square and uh, kind of changed the shape of it to a kind of a rot uh, rectangle here. And I'll turn off polygons. And you want to put uh, rectangles for the back and front. Uh, I guess you call these shoulders you really want to and again when you rotate these and move them over to the other side um, you just want to like change the negative on whatever rotate value it is and it will automatically flip it so like if it's this one has like a 45 degree rotate y when you duplicate it over just put a negative in front of it and tap enter and it will make it negative 45 on the other side <coughs> anyway i'm going to leave these controls up real quick So you guys can um, fit, fit all your controls in here. Let me make a quick phone call. Be right back.
Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So for the tail, <clears throat> we're going to treat it like the neck. So duplicate the neck control. And uh, go ahead and add to the tail joints. Now it looks like we also need a couple more of those on the neck. So just go ahead and duplicate them for the neck as well. And you can V-snap them for the joints. I'll show you in a sec. So you want to V-snap those controls to the neck uh, joints and the tail joints. And uh, I just, mine looked like this. This is kind of how I did it here.
All right, another minute here. Let's get our controls. Get our controls in here. All I've done is V-snapped them to the joints and just scaled them and rotated them. That's it. Uh, for you rock stars who have finished, we want some locators snapped to the eyeballs. Locators are located in the rigging tab. This little sprocket looking thing. Uh, I don't even know how you describe that. V snap those to the eyeballs. Like this. Two locators. Uh, no, we're going to do uh, eye pointing. We're going to go a little crazy with the eyes. Crazy eyes. No.
Okay, uh, <clears throat> so for these locators, what we're going to do is have the eyes point at them. And, um, how are we going to do this? All right, so um, what we need to do is move these eyes. As you can see, his eyes um, point out to the side. So we need the locators to move out at an angle. And there's an easy way to do that. You just need to do a little bit of math. And I know we're like, oh my god, I don't want to do math. Um, but what what I'm doing here is I'm just moving these. I'm going to remember the value. Look at the value of translate X, Y, and Z. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of, so I'm at like 10, 30, 30 roughly. So I'm going to move this little locator out here to the right of kind of where I want it to point to. And then I'll look. And it looks like I add 20 in X and about 10 in Z. So what you can do is just whatever the number is, add 22 translate X. So mine's at 10, so I'll change that to 30. And then add 10 to translate Z. So that's 28. I'm going to make that 38. <clears throat> and then you'll do the same thing for the other eye. So I'll go over that again. So I'm just going to grab the other eye control and move it up. And I'll, I'll make a note of the numbers here, 10, 30, 30-ish. 30 and it's just going to be the same sort of thing. I'll move it up, move it over. And it's the same thing. There's just no negatives on it. So this one will become 30. I'll add 20 to translate X, whatever that number is. 30. And then I'll add 10 to translate Z. So that's 28, so I'll make it 38. So now the locators are off to the side at an angle of where the eyes are. And you know what, if you're like, screw the math, you can just move them, just move them at an angle out to where the eyes are pointing. It doesn't have to be perfection. And then let's go ahead and save these scenes. File, save scene as, and uh, mine is turtle 2. I'm just going to save that as turtle 3 before we start going crazy with this guy.
All right. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the eyes real quick. So we have all of our controls in place now. And uh, we just need to attach them to the bones. And what I would do is go ahead and select both of the eye controllers. And uh, edit, delete by type history. edit delete by type history then go to modify uh, freeze freeze transformations modify freeze transformations and that's gonna kill the scale on those so you can just grab them both and scale them back up to where you like it And then what we want to do is, over on the right-hand side, select the scale attribute name here, scale XYZ, then right-click on it, and then go to uh, lock and hide selected. So scale them to how you want them, and then do lock and hide selected on the scale attributes. And what that's going to do is basically hide the ability to scale these controls from the animator so the animator um, can't mess with the scale all right so again with these two controllers selected edit delete by type history modify freeze transformations and then scale them up to how big you want them select the scale attributes here right click on them and then go to lock and hide selected and as you'll see now that that's gone and then what we want to do is set up the aim control for these you're gonna have to change your drop down to rigging in the upper left All right, you have to go back to rigging and there's a an option here under constrain called aim and what we want to do I think you select the locator then select the eye joint then you can open the option box here for aim under constrain and there's a maintain offset checkbox we want to turn that on and select it and that works so select the locator, then shift select the eye joint, and go to constrain and the option box for aim. Then there's a maintain offset checkbox, turn that on, and then hit apply. You have to select the locator first, then the eye joint. And um, then when you move the locator for the eye, it'll um, aim at it like this it's kind of weird but and you want to do that for the other eye <clears throat> and I'll go over that again uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just go up to constrain and the option box for aim and again you have to have your rigging drop down selected over here in the upper left <clears throat> constrain option box for aim 
turn on maintain offset then select the locator hold shift and select the eye joint <clears throat> and then just click add or apply if you hit apply <clears throat> it will apply it and keep the window open if you click add <clears throat> it will apply it and close the window so then we can select the locators now for the eyes and move those and the eyeballs will follow them All right. And eventually what we're going to do is parent these eye controls to the head control but we're not so that when you rotate the head control <coughs> it will rock it will um it will rotate the eyes. Well, actually, it's not going to work, so we'll have to do that a different way. But when you rotate the neck, it will rotate the um, eye controls as well. There's another cool uh, system I've seen riggers do where the eye controls are not parented to the head control. And I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> looks very bizarre, but if you were to move the turtle around when that's not the case, the turtle's eyes will always follow the controls. See that? So that way you could like let's see. <clears throat> that way you can like position the eyes wherever and then when you animate the turtle the eyes will always point at wherever the controls are. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of a weird thing. <coughs> anyway. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and attach the rest of these controls to the joints. Um, let's go ahead and start with um, <clears throat> let's try something crazy actually so go to show and then just turn on and then click none and then go to show and turn on uh, NURBS curves so it just shows all the curves so go to show none and then show NURBS curves. And then I want you to select all the curves. And with them all selected, do an edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze transformations. Edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze transformations. Yeah. Okay, so what that means is uh, accidentally a key was set on there. So just select your controls, <coughs> and you're looking for a little red thing down in the. Uh, you can maybe set your. You see any red thing down there? Oh, okay. Timeline's right where my mouse is. Yeah, it's not online. Okay, you can go to display. Um, oh, uh, that's interesting. I don't know how your timeline disappeared. Um, okay, go to Windows, Workspaces, Reset Maya Classic to Factory de Default. And then when you select your controls, you're looking for a little red. Alright, right click on that, delete it. 
that would be an incoming connection. <coughs> then once you do that, then you can go to edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze transformations on everything. Okay. <coughs> then we can bring back, go to show, bring back our joints. <coughs> And um, let's go ahead and start by, we're going to constrain, we're going to parent constrain the neck joints and the tail joints and the shell and the base. Don't worry about the legs. Do everything from the legs. And what you do is you'll we'll start with the head. You're going to select the, uh, neck, the head controller, then select the neck or I'm sorry the head joint and then um, you're gonna go to constrain parent so control first then the joint constrain parent then then test it out grab the joint the controller and rotate it and it should rotate the joint you're going to do the same thing for all the neck joints, all the tail joints, the shell, and the base. So again, I'll go over that again. Select the uh, neck control. Shift select the neck joint. Constrain parent. <coughs> no. I mean, maybe. Hold on. I actually don't know the hot key, hot key for that, so I, I think I think P is for regular parent, which is a different thing. Yeah, you have constraints and then you have like real parenting. So when you do the neck controller, as you can see, when I rotate the neck controller, it's not rotating the head with it. So we need to parent the head control to the neck control. So the way you do that is select the head control, then shift select the neck control, and tap P for parent. That way when I rotate the neck control, it now rotates the head as well. So once we constrain the, the joints to the controls, we then have to parent each control to each other down the chain so that when you rotate a base control, it rotates, like you rotate the shoulders control, it rotates the neck. And when you rotate the neck control, it also rotates the head. So for example, I'll do this kind of main torso controller here, I guess you could call it. Select the control, shift select the joint, constrain parent. So then when I rotate that, it does what I, wanted it to do which contro uh, controls the torso but I needed to also control the neck which also controls the head so I select the neck control shift select the torso control and tap P now when I rotate the torso control it rotates the neck control because it's parented and when I rotate the neck control it rotates the head control because it's parented. So you have to constrain the joints to the controls and then you have to parent each control to each other down the chain so that the base control controls all of them. Okay. You'll want to do the same thing for the tail going the reverse direction. <coughs> so I'll show you how to do the tail real quick. Shift select control first, then joint, constrain, parent, then do the same thing, then do the same thing. Hang on. Then I'll select the joint, or I'm sorry, the, the control for the tip of the tail, then the one, shift select the one going down, then tap P for parent. Then I'll select the next one in the chain, then shift select the next one down, and tap P for parent. So when I rotate the base control of the tail, it rotates all of the other tail controls going up and vice versa. Yes, Danny. Yeah, so if you turn on the polygon, 
Oh my god. What happened? Oh my god. Alright, what's the problem here, Riggers? Okay, so here's the. All right, so. All right, you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news. All right, the bad news is, uh, as we were waiting this, somehow we missed it. The good news is, it's not a bad problem. This kind of stuff happens all the time. Very easy to fix this. Um, what you're gonna do is. I'm just going to grab that torso control, like Danny said, rotate it down. Oh, God. Oh, God. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to – there's a point here that we missed, okay? No big deal. Right-click and hold on that. Go to Vertex. Select that Vertex that's gone AWOL. And then you want to go to – what's that? There's two? Oh, my God. Wow. Telling you, man, this Friday is just – everything's going crazy. You want to select those two vertices. Double-click your paint skin weights tool. That's going to be under the rigging tab. It's going to look like a, a graph with a paint brush. Double-click that. And you're going to find that uh, – head joint looks like I didn't name mine appropriately so I'll have to find it the way you can find it is you just select any joints in that list and you just start using your down arrow until you find it mine's called bone 12 and it's gonna highlight in blue make sure the value is set to 1 and then tap flood and those joints will uh, sorry vertices will pop into place without a hitch and you can close out of that and then you can select your um, controller again and then since we froze transformations you can just go to rotate X or whatever and set that back to zero and it will pop back into place does anybody need me to go over that again? Good, good, good eye on that, Danny.
All right, remember to attach the turtle uh, shell control. You want to constrain parent that and then attach the base to the base joint. Constrain parent that. Now the turtle shell control will be parented to the base control and the base tail control and the base torso control will be parented to the to the main base control so when I rotate the main base control it's going to rotate everything and then when I rotate the shell the shell will only rotate the shell Uh, y you want to parent controls to each other. You want to constrain controls to joint. Does that make sense? Yes. And let's take another minute. Um, you select the child first. Wait, 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 wait. In, in what scenario? In the, in the parenting of the controls. In the parenting of controls, you select the child first, then the parent. In the constraining of controls, you select the thing you want to, the controller first, and then the thing you want to control, and then constrain. So it's reverse for constraining. For parenting, it's the opposite. You know what's crazy? The thing about it is in Maya is like every time you do a thing where you have to select one thing first, then select the next thing, I feel like for every option, there's so many different scenarios in Maya where you'll do that. It, yeah, they should have done that. But it's, I feel like for every tool, it's different. Like, you'll, like these, for example, the aim on the eyes, right? So we selected the eye controller first, then we selected the joint. Right, but as I was doing it, I couldn't remember if it was control first, then I joint, or I joint, then control. So, generally, what you want to do is just select anything, try it. If it doesn't work, undo and do the reverse. Hello. One second, one second. Okay, say that again. Yes. So when you rotate the square, square controller, it will rotate everything. The other thing is you want to do, you want to parent the eye controls to the head control. All right, so to parent these eye controllers to the head, you can do two at one time, which is also cool. So if you had like 50 controls you wanted to parent to one thing, you could do that. You just select them all, then shift select the controller you want to parent them to and tap P, and they will all parent at the same time.
Are his feet parented to the main control as well? So we haven't done any of the feet yet. Oh, okay. No legs, no feet. Okay, so speaking of, all right, um, tap your space bar and let's go into the top view here. And let's look at this. You want to hide polygons. Let's look at this from a top view. We're going to go ahead and do the legs. All right. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in on an arm. Let's go ahead and zoom in on an arm here. All right, this is going to get a little bit crazy. So everybody pay attention here. Go ahead and grab the main flipper. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is rotate this main flipper. The problem is is that the pivot point for this flipper is in the center of the flipper and it really needs to be over here on the elbow. All right, so we can fix that quite easily. So with the flipper selected, you're going to tap the insert button on your keyboard. The insert button is basically above the arrow keys next to home and above delete. Now when you tap the insert button, uh, go ahead and uh, you can move the pivot point over to, just move it on over to the basically the corner of this joint here. See that? You want to move it over to the, and I'm in my top view here, it makes it a whole lot easier. I'm just moving it over, that's it. And then you're going to tap insert again to set it. And that way when you rotate it, it's going to rotate from the, the end, uh, elbow here as opposed uh, to the other thing. All right. Um, so now you want to do the same thing for the um, shoulder. Go ahead and select the shoulder control, tap insert. And you want to move this up and back to the elbow and then tap uh, insert again. <laughs> All right, so now that will rotate from the elbow. Now you want to constrain the joints to the controls and then parent each control to each other. Just like we did with the neck and the tail. So you want to select the flipper control, shift select the flipper joint, constrain parent. Select the control for the shoulder, shift select the shoulder joint, constrain parent. Then you want to parent them together. So select the flipper, then shift select the shoulder control, P. Then you want to parent the shoulder control to the main main square control. Select the shoulder control, shift select the main square control, and tap P. So main square control will rotate the shoulder, the shoulder will rotate the flipper, and the flipper will rotate the flipper and you'll notice that those actually look pretty cool when you turn your polygons back on it works the way it's supposed to work now that process we want to repeat uh, for the other flipper and the back two legs. Same thing, all right? And I'll go through that with the other flipper here one more time. So in my top view, first things first, I need to fix my pivot points for the flipper and the shoulder. So I'll select the flipper, tap insert, 
and I'm just going to move that on over to the flipper joint then tap insert again to set my pivot same thing for the shoulder control I have to change the pivot point to the shoulder joint so I will select it tap insert move it on up move it on over then tap insert again to set it now I need to constrain the joints to the controls so I select flipper control first then select flipper joint constrain parent then shoulder control first shift select shoulder joint constrain parent then I want to parent the flipper control to the shoulder control so I select flipper control first shift select shoulder control and tap key then I want to parent the shoulder control to the main control so I'll select shoulder control shift select main control and tap key <clears throat> so looking at that when I select my main control it now rotates both arms when I shift select my shoulder control, it selects both shoulders. When I select my flipper controls, it now rotates both flippers. So you're going to want to re repeat that process for the legs. Pivot point? The flipper, this thing? <coughs> That's going to be here okay. to the, the joint, the center of the joint. Uh, I'm calling this the shoulder. Okay. So on the shoulder control, put that to the shoulder joint. No, no, I meant on the hip. Oh, on the hip? The back flippers. <clears throat> so this guy, let's see, this one here, let's take a look. I haven't done those yet, Danny. Just kidding. All right, yeah, so this this one, let's uh, <clears throat> tap insert. I'm just going to move this one over and move it down to the joints. And then I'll probably do the same thing. We'll call this rear leg or something and I'll just move this one over and down as well <coughs> then I'll constrain these to the joints constrain parent constrain parent then I'll parent them to each other and then I'll parent the leg to the main control so let's take a look at that so main control rotates everything back leg rotate oh my god we have a problem uh, rear control rotates or I'm sorry leg control rotates the flipper and then flipper control rotates the flipper there's an issue there something looks funky uh oh was that the other issue you found Danny Yes, that looks like a problem. So on the uh, rear leg, we had the, we have the same problem that we have with the neck. As you can see, we've got some verts standing out there. We just need to grab those verts and uh, flood paint skin weights those tool to the um, back leg to fix those. And if I had to guess probably have the same issue on the other side yep we do very easy to fix that yep two vertices so we'll just rotate it out of place right click and hold and select the vertices that are 
Three vertices. three vertices. Select all three of those forgotten vertices. Double click my paint skin weights tool and I'll use my arrows to find that back leg joint flood. That's it, it's a quick fix. All right, now let's hook up the other leg. And I'm gonna move my pivot on over. Move my pivot on over. Constrain the joints to the flipper. Constrain the uh, joint to the leg. Parent the flipper control to the leg control. Parent the leg control to the main control. Now we'll fix that weighting issue. Rotate this thing out of place. Oh my god. Three vertices. Select those. <coughs> Paint skin weights tool. And let's find that joint. Okay. And flood. Make sure you have the correct joint. Yeah, it's the only one that I can do it. It's the only joint you can. Do. do you? Uh, okay.
All right, everybody got all your legs set up and everything? Okay. So I think everything should be parented to everything and constrained to everything. So when you move main controller, it should move the entire turtle. Go ahead and save your scenes. File save scene as. Save it as a new version. All right, everybody done here? Okay, so this guy's pretty much done. It's ready for animation. Let's go ahead and set it up to where we're gonna pass it off to an animator. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and create some layers here. It's still, it's still not done, still not a ready, ready to go file. Down in your right hand corner, um, 
there's a, a new button that says create a new layer. I want to create three new layers. One, two, three. Create three new layers, then we're going to rename each one. Name one controls, name the other one. Name the other one hidden, and name the other one um, model. You can double click them and you can rename them. Controls, hidden, and model. And then you can select the items for those in your view and then right click on each layer, add selected objects. So you want to add, add all the controls to the control layer. Um, add the models to the model layer and I'm actually not sure what we're going to put in hidden um, oh yeah put the joints in hidden good job Danny controls I knew it was something Controls, hidden, model. Models. All right, so joints go in hidden. Right click, joints. And you can turn on the, the yeah. Joints go in hidden. Uh, controls go in controls. And then model goes in model. Joints go in hidden, controls go on the controls, and then models go in model. Now, um, there's like some little stuff next to the layers. There's a V's and some P's and then an empty spot. For the hidden, you want to turn off the V. Okay. For the um, model, so hidden, turn off the V. For the model, you want to turn on R. Turn on the R in the empty box. And then for the controls, the controls you leave as is. And you can actually change, I, what I like to do is change the controls to a color that stands out, like green. See how that green pops out like that? And you can also create additional um, control layers and add different controls to different layers and change the colors of those. So for example, add another layer here. I'll call it um, controls two and I'll make it red and I'll add the eye controls to that. Now my eye controls are red and my body controls are green. Yeah, Actually, I'll make those blue. So now, the reason why we put these in layers like this is, so if I just drag a box over these controls now, it doesn't select any joints, it doesn't select any models, it just selects the controls. And this is an animation ready file right now. So I would save this scene as like turtle final. And it's ready to go, ready to be animated. I think our control for our separate menu. Uh, yeah, the control, I have, yeah. And I'll leave this up here. 
PC model. Oh, sorry. Everybody follow me on this, kind of, sort of, maybe. All right, who wants to do something crazy? We'll do one more thing to this turtle that's absolutely nuts. Um, no, no animation today. Nope, we'll do some more rigging stuff. Everybody open up an internet browser. Go to... CADNAV, which is my favorite site. Click on any model, then go to the search. And then type in turret. We're going to put a turret on this turtle shell. Yes. Yes. Are you kidding me, man? Let's go crazy. Be nice to find a cartoon turret, something that matches the style. If you find anything, let me know. Because, I mean, what fun is a turtle without guns? Duh. I'll, I'll let my turtles know that I'm I mean, duh. Spell turret. There's no, there's not two T's on it. Oh man, I think I found it. Turret. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. I found it. Ten thousand polygons. Holy, kind of looks like a. Uh, What's that game on Steam? With the what? That's Team Fortress. Yeah, yeah. Team Fortress. But it's cool because like, it looks like this. This is kind of. It looks like game ready. You can kind of stick this. Go ahead and download this bad boy right here. It's called uh, Century Turret 3D Model. Find that, download it, unzip it. So I told you about this particular project. We didn't do it from scratch, but this is going to be one of those situations where you're going to get a model. It's already got some stuff done to it. We needed to add some more stuff, and now we've, we're later down the project, and the director or whoever has decided that the turtles need machine guns. And we're like, oh my god, really, man? We've already rigged this thing? And he's like, I don't care. Add it to the rig. So now we're going to add this to the rig. So find the download button, click that. I know, it's bananas. All right, so once you download it to unzip it, you're going to right click on it and go to 7-zip extract files. 7-zip extract files. And the good news is there's an FBX file. I hope that thing's not rigged. Is it rigged? It is not rigged. Uh, let's go ahead and just make sure you save your turtle scene 
before you import this and then go ahead and go to file import and we'll just import it right into the scene Yes, import the FBX. Should be in documents download or student. Documents, student, downloads. Oh my god! If you move it up, it has the four select for polygon view. You know what? It actually like kind of comes in like almost the right size. This thing's actually going to work out quite perfectly. Where's the texture? All right, what's the tool we use to fix the textures? Windows General Editors File Path Editor. Windows General Editors File Path Editor and you'll see the problem immediately read path files Yeah, so it looks like Okay, it looks like it's looking for Century 2 and Century 1.tga, and uh, these are named something different. They're named Century 2 Blue and Century 1 Blue. So the easy way to do this would just be remove that blue underscore blue from the names. Uh, of the actual texture files in your downloads directory and then using the file path editor Windows general editors file path editor then we should be able to just yeah yeah that works then you repath them and it works It's still not showing up for some. Okay, yeah. If you just click four, five, six again, it eventually comes in correct. <laughs> again, so if you guys missed what I did there, um, you need to just in the texture names for the targas here, Century One and Century Two. There's an underscore blue in the name. Just rename them and remove that. And then when you use your Windows General Editor's File Path Editor, you can repath the files, uh, and it'll find the textures just fine. If anybody needs any help with that, let me know.
the downloads folder uh, or the folder with the, with the textures in it and the good news is this thing comes in as all one file except for what the heck Okay, there's a slight problem. If you open up your uh, hypergraph hierarchy, if you open up your hypergraph hierarchy, there's some things in here we're going to have to remove. Uh, to get to the hypergraph hierarchy, Okay. Okay. Another way you can do it is um, if you go to Windows, you, whenever you download models from online, there, there's always, you know, it never comes in perfect, right? So there's a bunch of extra stuff here. You can go to Windows. Um, General Editors Hypergraph Hierarchy. Windows General Editors Hypergraph Hierarchy. And you'll have this big window that pops up here and there's a ton of extra like little extra files in here or little extra things in here that don't do anything. And you can just select all of those. And one of them is the machine gun. And it's these extra bits here. All these, I don't know, oh, these actually look like bones looks like somebody might have tried to rig this and didn't but you can select all these guys and then tap and you can move them to make sure you don't have any of the turtle and then tap delete and there's a couple other extra things in here it looks like we created them two nerb squares they're at the center of the grid those they're nothing so you can delete those too, if you have them. So the things we want in here are the turtle, the bones, the controllers, and the machine gun. All right, let's make this thing happen. So first and foremost, go ahead and move the turret up and back. And what I would do what I would do, we'll just remove that whole lower part of the uh, turret. So basically the turtle shell has like a like a orange and kind of greenish bit and what I would do is stick the top of the pole for the turret just in the center like this to where it hides whatever is below it. That actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, I do like this. And we're just going to chop off everything, everything below this, this pole. So all these things on the side here, we'll chop those off. So you want to stick it to where it's like the, the kind of the base of this thing is sticking out of the center of the top of the turtle's shell. All right, so now we can uh, begin the process of chopping off this, chopping off this stuff. What I would do is, with the gun selected, go to Show, Isolate, Select, View, Selected. Show, Isolate, Select 
view selected. Oh yeah, you could do that too with the layers, but uh, so then what? And you right click on the uh, machine gun and go to face, and you just start selecting faces and chop, and then click delete, and start chopping them off. Make sure you don't delete the pole. We just want to get all these sides. We're just deleting faces. And you can tap four on your keyboard. There's some bits inside the pole. They're kind of funky. You may need to uh, go into wireframe mode to be able to select those bits. So all that should be left is just this pole sticking out of the bottom and the turret. And when you're finished, you can uh, go to show, isolate, select, view, select it again, <coughs> and bring the turtle back. And save your scenes. All right, everybody good? Still working? Okay, um, for that, what I, save your scene is something different, and uh, I'll just close out of Maya, reopen Maya, and reopen the scene. All right, so depending on the application of this, there'd be a couple different ways that we could go about really attaching this to the turtle. Um, if, if we were just doing a movie, if this was for film, all we'd literally need to do is parent the turret to the shell control, okay? Which would be very easy. Select the turret, shift select the control for the turtle shell and that'd be a wrap. Okay, if we were doing film. But, this is a games program. What that means is, is that this needs to work in a video game engine. And 
in a video game engine, you can't just parent stuff to each other like that because video game engine is not going to understand Maya's hierarchy in parenting. So we actually need to skin this turret to um, the same joint as the turtle shell. Okay, so we need to add this thing to the skeleton, which is crazy. All right, so in order to do that, uh, we need to turn back on our hidden layer, which has our joints. And what I want you to do is select the turret and then shift select the, tur uh, the shell joint. And we want to go to skin and the option box for bind skin. Okay, skin and the option box for bind skin. Now in here, we want to change some of these options and you want to make sure that you're in your rigging drop down in the upper left in order for the skin option to show. Okay, I'll go over this one more time, all right? So in the upper left, change your drop down to rigging. <coughs> then uh, you want to select the turret and then the Oh, you want to make sure that your joint layer, the hidden layer, ch check the V on for that to make it come back. V is for visibility. Select the turret. Shift select the joint for the turtle shell. And then go to skin and the option box for bind skin. Go to skin, option box for bind skin. All right, so now a couple options here we want to select. We only want this turret to be skinned to the turtle joint. If we leave these options the way they are, there's a chance that like some of this turret could get skinned to the head joint and et cetera, et cetera, right? We don't want to let, let Maya do what it wants to do. So under bind two, right now it's set to joint hierarchy. We need to change that to selected joints. So it binds the turret to the selected joints, okay? We can leave bind method the same. We can leave normalized weights the same. We can leave weight distribution the same. Where it says max influences, change that to one. And what that means is, is that it's only going to allow everything to be influenced by one joint, which is the the shell joint. Okay? And we should be able to just hit apply and that should work. I think we should just be able to select our turtle shell control and it should now be skinned. And that actually worked perfectly. And you can select the main turtle control. And it does what we want. Did everybody keep up with me on that one? Did I lose anybody? The what never showed up? Okay, um, to fix that, you just go to Windows, General Editors, uh, File Path Editor, Windows, General Editors, File Path Editor. What's up, Josh? And uh, do you have red in there? R red, it should be all green, checks. Okay, so that's going <coughs> to need to be fixed. To fix that, you want to, it's looking for some textures that are named Century 1 and Century 2. you got to go into your, first of all, you have to set it to the folder that where they're in, but then you have to rename them. 
to match. Anyway, um, and, 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 and he can do that, but uh, that's how we do that, you guys. And if you want, I mean, you could go in here and, like, add more joints. Remember how we added the joints for the eyes and the turtle shell? You could come in here and add influences for these for these chain guns to, like, rotate. And you could also add, like, you know, more joints in here if you wanted this thing to rotate independently of the shell or whatever. It really doesn't matter. But right now, <coughs> it is attached to the shell control. So the turtle can, you know, do his thing. Anyway, that's all for today, you guys. Good work. And I will see you all next Friday.